my lovely assistant, Robert. That, that line never gets old. Just never gets old. Um, I have some friends, Tim and Stacy, who began dating in high school. And after four years after graduation, in 1983, they got married. Everything seemed fine to everyone but Stacy, that is. Recently, after 40 years of marriage, she announced to Tim, one of my best friends, that she wants a divorce. No talking together, no counseling together, no praying together. She simply wants out, A-S-A-P. No big surprise, Tim feels betrayed, angry. He's going through some, some trust issues right now. Has maybe you, yourself, or somebody you love has experienced, divorce is ugly and full of fear. What is the future gonna look like? Fear has been a part of the human condition from the very beginning. When you look at the Bible, you don't have to go far, 66 verses to be exact, before you encounter the emotion of fear. Adam and Eve have sinned. When God shows up for their daily walk in the cool of the evening, they are nowhere to be found. When God finally does find Adam, he asks, where were you? Adam's response, I was afraid. Other examples of human fear in the Bible are some of the events that led up to the crucifixion. For example, the Jewish religious authorities are afraid. They're afraid that Jesus is going to become so popular that their own authority will be questioned, that Jesus will somehow have the people rise up so that they enter into some kind of revolt Also, on Easter morning, there are plenty of examples of fear. The soldiers are afraid. At the appearance of God's angel, they freeze and eventually fall down. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary are afraid when they see the open tomb. Had somebody come and stolen the body of Jesus? The disciples are hiding in fear. They're afraid that they are going to be the next ones to be crucified. And the good news of Easter morning didn't do much to allay their fears. They were afraid 
because they didn't know what they were going to do without Jesus Christ as their leader. Humanity was afraid then. Humanity is afraid now. But divorce may not be the issue for you, but there's plenty of other things to fear. What will the doctor find in the test results? Are we saving enough money for the future? Infertility just was not part of the plan when we got married. And the list goes on and on. If we let it, fear can control our lives. But what if we could live without fear? Truly, this is God's desire for us. There are 365 verses in the Bible that say, do not be afraid or fear not. That's one reminder from God for each day of the year. I'll say it again. God does not want us to be afraid. If we trust that Jesus is who he says he is, if we trust that he died and rose for our salvation, if we trust enough to put our lives in his hands, he promises us that we do not need to be afraid. He will not forsake us. He will not fail us. He will not abandon us. Because Jesus lives, we can live without fear. In last week's gospel, Jesus sent the disciples out for mission so that they could uh, teach and preach and heal in his name. Jesus elsewhere tells them that they can expect to be flogged, arrested, persecuted, betrayed, hated. Kind of makes me wonder well, if the disciples thought to themselves, what did I get myself into? One of the reasons I think they may have asked that question to themselves is that in today's gospel, Jesus says, do not be afraid. How were they to overcome their fears? Essentially, Jesus tells the disciples to remember who and whose they are. They are children of God who are loved by God. Even the hairs of your head are counted, Jesus tells them. As it was for the first disciples, so it is for us. God loves us. Now, in times of trial, it's sometimes hard to believe that God loves us so much. But we'll make it through. With God's help, we'll make it through. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. It probably isn't going to happen just the way we expect it to happen. But 
God will somehow use our mess for our good. We can't be foolish or na naive, but we also can't despair. With God's help, we will make it. Step by step by step. Let us stand now to profess.